All right, so today we're gonna to be showing you how we water berries here in the Arizona desert. That's coming up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here today, middle of August, kind of a hot sweaty morning, but uh, we're continuing our series here on how we're irrigating all of our fruit trees and vines and bushes here on the farm. So today what we're concentrating on is our berries. So I'll uh, link our uh, Primark Blackberry, you'll recognize him. He's this guy right here below me, uh, but I'll, I'll uh, link that video here for you so you can take a peek at our earliest harvest on this particular variety. You know, we got, I don't know, I think it was what, three or four gallons, gallon sized bags full of blackberries off of this one vine. We're in fact, we're in August, we finished doing that I think it was in June ish and where we still have some frozen berries that we're wrapping up here over the next few weeks we use them every single day in our smoothies so uh, very very productive this particular variety at least has been very productive for us we have several berries here and they're kind of uh, you know really for the most part in the summertime they're really just trying to survive uh, which is what they're doing now so we got our raspberry it's got some green tips on it, a lot of brown uh, our boysenberry has got a lot of brown with some green uh, got a little bit of brown and green in these two varieties here the Primark is probably the best looking uh, but this guy here is amazing. We're going to talk about him in another video. He's really spread out and is like trying to take over. So we'll talk more about that. But uh, you can see the berries themselves are doing really, really well here in the Arizona desert. So what we want to do is concentrate on the zone. So this is zone three for us. And um, we have multiple things on zone three, uh, not just berries. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But before I do, I want to take you to our control panel so we can talk more about zone three. Okay, so we're back at our control panel and we're talking about zone three. So zone three includes berries. So we have our blackberries and raspberries on this zone. We also actually have some regular fruit trees on this zone. So this one's a little unique. We're gonna talk more specifically about how we deal with that over at the actual bushes and trees themselves. But zone three, so I've got zone three set up on section A. Um, so it's watered along with our main orchard, not at the same time, but the same night as our main orchard uh, but zone three you can see here is set up for three hours at a time again we're in August um, so during the month of August we're watering our heaviest um, because we're as hot as it gets um, so we're watering three days a week three hours at a time so that's zone three Okay, so that is zone three. So once you get out of that panel, it opens up the valve and actually the valve for this particular uh, group of trees is actually on our west side of the property. So it is a couple, a different set of valves uh, from what I showed you in our original video, uh, but it's a different set of valves that comes in on this side of the property. So what this zone feeds, it feeds our berries, which are in these beds, but it also feeds another row of regular trees, uh, which you can kind of see here behind me. Uh, so we've got several trees that we put in about a year and a half ago uh, that we got all bare root. We'll talk more about those another time. But I've got regular trees on this zone and I also have berries. So the challenge is, how do I water berries which don't have the same water requirements as trees, and how do I water those trees on the same watering zone? In other words, water's coming out at the same time. So how this works is I've got water that comes in uh, from the valve, comes in this direction and runs basically right behind me through a PVC valve that takes a 90 degree and goes down that pasture row, as well, or down that uh, orchard row as well. So behind me, um, I've got uh, two, a, well, two emitters. Um, so I've got a single uh, riser. If Lori wants to squeeze in, we'll show you the riser first. So we have the water that comes in here. I've got a single riser that has just a single head right here and a single uh, quarter inch drip line that comes out from that uh, valve stem right or that, that stem right there. So that single um, line actually gets split. So just beyond here, you can't see it. It's underneath the wood chips. But just beyond here, this has a T that splits it in half. And what that does is it runs to both sides of this bed. So we have this bed here that's about a five by five bed or so. Uh, we have it filled with wood chips of course and then on both sides we have an emitter so you can see this this emitter looks different it's got a different color um, top from our four gallon emitters and the reason why is this is a two gallon per hour emitter I have it split so that it's on both sides of this bed uh, and it waters more area um, in this bed but not quite as heavy as our regular trees most of our trees we well, in fact all of our trees we have set on four gallon per hour em, um, emitters but these bushes don't need that much water so what we do we've got it running for 
for three hours, just like we showed you, um, but it's got four gallons an hour, so about 12 gallons that's split up um, across the bed. So we're watering more of the bed. Now, why that's important, um, all of your blackberries actually set out runners. And so these runners actually produce additional vines. Depending on the type of berry, um, those vines will either, either fruit one time the second year, or like this one's a primocane, we've got fruiting on old vines from last year, and we actually have new fruit that's already setting uh, here in the fall. So we get two crops of berries off of last year's growth, and then this new strong growth that's coming out this year. Um, but you get these runners that come out. We want to make sure that we're feeding those runners that are feeding these blackberry trees and allowing them to expand and of course give us more blackberries. So I want to make sure I spread that water out across the bed but not over water it because I don't need that much water. So second part of that challenge of course um, that's now solved is the rest of my trees that are behind me here are actually still watering at our standard tree watering rate you know which is a three four gallon per hour emitters and then of course three hours a night three days a week. So again those trees are getting about 100 gallons a week. These berry bushes are getting eh, right around 30 or so, 30 to 35 gallons per week, which is plenty of water for these berries, as you can see. All right, so that was zone three, um, which actually is probably gonna conclude our series on irrigation because, well, we've shown you the majority of our orchard and our fruiting trees. So what we're gonna do is I kind of wrap up this video. We're gonna walk down our third row of our primary orchard, which again is the, uh, in addition to the berries, it's zone three for us uh, on our irrigation schedule. Uh, but these trees that as we're walking by, these trees are all about a year and a half old. Various sizes, some are doing really, really well. Some have fruit on them uh, like this uh, winter banana uh, apple tree we'll talk more about that in another video uh, I've got several apple trees lots of different varieties uh, on this side that we'll discuss in another video but uh, this zone irrigates this whole side of me my left hand side irrigates this left hand side along with our berries so we just kind of want to give you guys a quick sneak peek at that so just want to thank you for joining us today. And you know what, if you haven't done so already, hey, subscribe to our channel. We'd love to have you as a subscriber. Uh, we've got a lot of things that we cover on the channel this time of year. The primary focus is our fruit trees, which is our primary crop production uh, during the wintertime here in Arizona. Uh, and they grow tremendously during the wintertime, but love to have you as a subscriber. And hey, you have any questions or comments, hey, leave them in the comment section down below. You know, we'd love to interact with all of our um, YouTube viewers and subscribers. If you have any questions, comments, hey, leave them down below. We'd love to interact with you. So just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, and if we can do this on the edge of nowhere, so can you. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne. No, weird. Actually, I'm gonna get on, on this side because we're gonna have to kind of slide back here past these ants. <clears throat> so this is a third part in a three, uh, three, maybe four part? I think it's a three part. I'm gonna start over because <laughs> I have no idea how many parts this is gonna be. <clears throat> All right.